What's going on, everyone? So we're back in action today. The Los Angeles Lakers take on the Golden State Warriors. This game is so crucial. But real quick, before I dive into uh, the ins and outs and news uh, surrounding the Lakers and Warriors game, let's briefly touch on the D'Angelo Russell, I guess, drama or whatever. Um, to me, it's kind of just like sweep it under the rug, move on, be done. But summarize, D'Angelo Russell talked about how it was very difficult to kind of crack the inner circle uh, with Darvin Ham and Dennis Schroeder, that relationship. Uh, and due to that, there wasn't really any communication. D'Angelo Russell didn't really know where he fit, didn't really understand his role. The relationship since then has been repaired. It's been good. That was what we got uh, the other day. Now we have Dennis Schroeder who has chimed in and basically said D'Angelo Russell is immature, right? Uh, basically talked about how like you're keeping somebody's name in their mouth. Well, it's immaturity. It shows the immaturity. Dennis Schroeder's in a different space, right? To me, it's just kind of like, I don't really think D'Lo is going to respond. Obviously, you know, the media, they're going to try to spin that, that wheel. I think it's nonsense. I can see D'Lo just kind of like brushing it off and moving on. So hopefully that's the case. Um, Dennis Schroeder is no longer a Laker. D'Lo is. It is what it is. Let's move on. So as far as the Lakers and what is going on with today, this is very crucial. So as of right now, again, this could change. It's very likely going to be a game time decision. Um, but Steph Curry, Draymond Green are both questionable. This is big for the Lakers. Obviously, you know, I'm somebody that I don't want to see guys injured. I don't want guys out. I want, you know, I want good competition. I want good games. I want to see the Lakers match up against the best teams possible. And that way they kind of get to build and grow and develop their skill sets, right? But we are in a position where we need every break possible. If we can get even just a small, little, little, minute break, I'll take it. Steph Curry not playing is obviously huge. Uh, I believe the Warriors are like one in five uh, when Steph Curry hasn't played this year. And then obviously Draymond Green, that's another huge uh, loss to the Golden State Warriors because one, defensively, he's still excellent. Uh, and he's also shooting the basketball very well. Right? Like one of the big things that the Lakers did like in their playoff matchup uh, last season was you saw them kind of leave Draymond open a lot, right? Kind of just let him take whatever he wanted. Well, this year he's shooting the ball excellent, shooting uh, above 40%. So that becomes a problem. So you don't have Draymond, who is in many ways their playmaker, their defensive anchor, as well as uh, a sharpshooter <laughs> this season. Uh, so you remove that, you remove Steph Curry, that really favors the Lakers. Now, if I'm being honest, I wouldn't really count on it, right? Because it is the Lakers and we know how it goes. Every time somebody is out with injury, what always happens, they come back, they, you know, somebody loses a leg, all of a sudden it regrew, right? Like it's just, it's crazy the, uh, the level in which guys like tear their Achilles and all of a sudden they're fine. And it's like, <laughs> what are we doing here? But no, that's just part of the Lakers, right? Teams show up, teams play big, teams love to see that circled on the calendar. And the Lakers got to match up, right? This is a team that right now you're one game ahead, handing on by the hair of your chin chin chin. And if you get this W, now you're two games ahead. Where if the Warriors win... Well, guess what? Now, they have the tiebreak currently. The Lakers still have a Warrior matchup uh, towards the end of the season, but they would have the tiebreaker. They would essentially leapfrog us. Now we're the 10th seed. Um, again, I would guess that the Warriors play everybody, like if they're healthy, but there is a real argument to, hey, we're probably going to finish at best the ninth seed, which regardless we're the ninth or 10th, yes, it would be nice to be at home, but it would be nicer to have Steph as close to 100% as possible, Draymond as close to 100% as possible. I could see them kind of taking their time to get these two back on the court, particularly Steph, right? You, you need Steph if you're going to make any type of push. Like if you really have a, a belief that the Warriors can win two straight games, it centers around Steph. 
If Steph isn't healthy, guess what? You're not winning anything. So that is something I could see happening. Um, but just in general, right? Lakers need to start rattling off some wins here. They need to start bouncing back. It is going to be very tough. I'm almost there. Not quite there yet, but I'm almost to the point where I don't believe that they'll get the six seed. Like I'm right now like 51-49 that the Lakers get the six seed. Just because they don't have tiebreakers over these teams because they didn't do their job when we needed them to do their job. And now you you see all these teams and you're two, three games behind, but they have tiebreakers. So really add an extra game because if the Lakers finish with the same record as Sacramento, guess what? Sacramento gets the leapfrog, right? They finish with the same record as the Dallas Mavericks. Guess what? Dallas gets the leapfrog. These are the things that... Because the Lakers didn't do what they were supposed to do, it put the Lakers in a compromised position to where now it's this uphill battle and climb. So I think more likely, best case scenario, 7th or 8th seed. I'm like 60-40 on the 7th or 8th seed. So I think the odds of the Lakers getting the 6th seed is very high. Or sorry, the 7th seed is very high. 6th seed... It's kind of a coin flip, right? We'll see how that goes. But the reason I think that the 7th and 8th seed is a viable option is because, one, Phoenix has the toughest schedule still the rest of the way. The Dallas Mavericks are kind of hot and cold. They have a, a, not a tough schedule, but you can see a couple points where they could lose a couple games. And Dallas this year has kind of been very hot and cold, period. Right? It's like they'll win three or four games. Then they'll lose three or four games. And then they'll win three or four games. It's like really weird with Dallas. So Lakers, you look at their schedule, realistically, the Lakers could win 12 out of the next 15. I mean, in all honesty, they could win all 15. But the Lakers team we've seen this year, I, I, would, I would bet pretty good money that they lose a handful of games. So... Can you kind of do a February stretch where they went like nine and three, right? And kind of go 12 and three or you know, like 11 and four, something like that. The, the only like real notable games where it's like, oh, that could be tough is like you have a matchup against Milwaukee on the road. Um, Lakers just beat Milwaukee. Can they beat Milwaukee again? Absolutely. But you're going to Milwaukee. Milwaukee's going to want that revenge game. I, I, I would be okay if they lost that game, right? Obviously, I want to win every game. But if it was like, hey, you know, you're going to lose games, right? So if you lost Milwaukee, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's it. It's over, right? It's like, okay, we'll, we'll slate that as an L. Um, then you have a couple games in March, Right, like the Lakers have a t like on paper, like you look at Philly and things like that, but they're not gonna have Joel Embiid, right? Um, you know, you play in Atlanta, they're not gonna have Trey Young, right? Like you start going through the list and you're like, oh well, the Lakers have like advantages there, and oh this team's missing their best player, oh this team's missing their best player, and it's like the Lakers are in a good position in that regard. And then even when you get to April, you got seven games, like. The Minnesota matchup. Like, where's Minnesota? Does Minnesota have the, you know, like the fourth seed locked up? And they're like, hey, let's just rest guys and keep everyone healthy because we're going to have a tough, we're going to play the Clippers in the first round. And then, like, you know, now you're playing the Nuggets in the second. Like, that could be something. Um, Cleveland, same thing, right? Like, Donovan Mitchell's been dealing with some injuries. Do they look at it and go, okay, let's just concede and take the three seed? And, let Donovan Mitchell be 100% healthy, and now we make that push for the playoffs. Um, then you got, like, the Warriors. That's a huge game. You got the Pelicans, which Pelicans, they might have, again, another team that has the fifth, maybe even sixth seed uh, locked up. Um, they could also very well have the – I mean, they're not, like, far as far as, like, the fourth seed goes. They're only, like, two games back now of the fourth seed. Uh, they just beat the Clippers. So depending on where they're at – um, they might just say, hey, let's rest Brandon Ingram, let's rest Zion, let's rest CJ, and, and kind of go into the postseason healthy. 
So the Lakers might catch some breaks in that regard. Again, we'll kind of touch on that once we get to that position. But the Lakers have a very favorable schedule. Do your job. Show up. Play Laker branded basketball. I don't mind them losing a game here and there. But we got to stop. I keep talking about trading games. You win two, you lose one. You win one, you lose one. You win one, you lose one. Right? We got to start rattling off a handful of wins in a row. The Lakers are like one extended win streak or one team's extended losing streak from all of a sudden being in like the seventh, maybe even the sixth seed, depending on which team it is that ends up you know, having a skid, or if the Lakers, depending on what that run is, where they start rattling off some wins. Thing is, though, you can't control other teams, right? But you can control your team. You have 15 games. If you are ever going to lock down and take this serious, now's the time. you got 15 games. If I'm the Lakers, I'm looking at this and going, we need to go 15-0. and If we really want the sixth seed, we need to go 15-0. and Otherwise... We're a play-in team. How badly do you want to be in the play-in? How much do you want to be in the sixth seed? Right? Like that, that, that's the question to me. Are you finally going to do what you need to do? Lock down, focus, be ready, and go rattle off some wins here. We'll see. Starts today. Let's get the W. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do you think the Lakers kind of get things back on track, get the bounce back win against the Warriors? Um, again, we'll update you as uh, as you know we find out news. Um, looks like ever like the usual suspects for the Lakers are out, um, but you know you always have like the questionable LeBron and AD, but they're gonna play. It's just that way, if something happens, they they can always sit them, but. It would be huge if the Warriors just kind of no Steph, no Draymond, or even just without one of them, right? Like, even if, like, Steph plays but you don't have Draymond, like, that's an advantage to the Lakers. Um, obviously, I'd prefer Draymond playing over Steph, but, you know, it's just either one would be an advantage. But anyway, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. It helps me to enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Now, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.